Okay, the reed staple. Now I use um, four millimeter or five thirty-two inches inside diameter brass tube, but some people prefer to make their own possibly tapered staples out of uh, sheet material. So <laughs> my standard mandrels uh, will fit 532 or 4 millimeter inside diameter brass tube. Now <clears throat> if you fit the brass tube onto the end of the, the mandrel and then just hammer it onto a steel block evenly on both sides so that it fits neatly onto the staple you'll end up with a taper um, I then I might need to zoom out here and refocus right I then use this eye punch either set it into a vise or you can hold it in this piece of wood here and just tap it onto the end of the, the eye punch and then just prise it off again because of the shape of the punch this will give you a lovely even eye now if you use a small pair of pliers where are we? Which I'll just have to go and get. Back again. Now, because I've opened up the end slightly, it's a lovely eye shape now, but I've opened it up very slightly. If I just hold it in the pliers and just squeeze, you'll see the pliers will give me a nice even shape here and it will flatten them down. Now I'm looking for an eye thickness about two mil but it's going to be a bit thicker at this point now there's various different thoughts about how to, how to do this but I personally like to file it down on the outside at this point so I use a relatively coarse file because I want a rough surface on the reed to attach the cane to but I'm also thinning down the reed towards the end here because I want a nice transition from the, the metal onto the onto the um, onto the cane. I don't want a lump any lumps. I want a nice smooth transition. And at the same time I'm preserving the eye shape on the outside of the staple. So I'm, I'm just forming the, the staple here to a nice eye shape and at the same time thinning thinning it down at the end. So that's my that's my staple prepared. <clears throat> now to tie the staple onto the the cane. I'm gonna I'll just reposition the camera again and refocus but I'm just gonna soak the tail end of the reed uh, for no more than a minute really and I, I think this helps to uh, just soften the reed and save it from cracking whilst you're tying it on because you, you, you apply quite a lot of pressure to the reed as you're tying it on it can very easily crack. Now the other thing with, with this 
shape of reed. I've got to zoom in again now to give you a better chance to see what's happening. And refocus should be about there. Um, the corners of these scallops need to be rounded off slightly. So I just use a little bit of sandpaper. So when I'm tying that in onto the staple, I won't get the little lump of that corner. All I'm doing is just taking that sh sharp corner off. There, that'll I'll just round it off here for me. I want it all nice and even so that it ties in nice and smoothly. And I want that corner slightly rounded so that should be about ideal. So I've taken the excess water off and just ease the staple into the end and up to the end of the to the point where the where <laughs> the corner was that I've just taken off. So that's ideal just there. Now I'll remove the, the camera so you can see better what's happening here and I'm going to zoom into the to the vise because that's going to be where I'm going to be tying it in. So if I set my winding block into the uh, into the vise using the same mandrel that I used to state, shape the tape the staple on fit the reed onto there I've got some stout stouter thread here so I want about three arm lengths of thread should be fine which I shall pull through a, a stick of beeswax to get some wax into the thread. See what I'm doing there? I've got it zoomed in on the on the winding block just now. So I'll create two half hitches and lay one over the other and then ease it over the reed to form a clove hitch at the base of the, the reed there. Now if I just wind it round gently and over overlay it over the the end of the knot so that it's holding the knot in place gently. I don't want to, not too tight at this moment in time because I want to keep the, to start to ease it onto the end of the, the reed cane. It's starting to hold onto the reed cane. Then I'll just trim off a little bit of excess Now, it's starting to tie in. Now there's various different thoughts on <clears throat> whether to glue the cane in place or not, but I personally use a little double of a Yoohoo glue, that's contact adhesive glue, it was too much. Um, just in the side of the reed there, just ease it in. And I'll use uh, the same glue um, to seal the thread with at a later date, but we'll get it tied in first. So at this point 
just to make sure that the cane looks straight and even on the staple. Hold a little bit of pressure. I think I'm going to have to zoom out again and refocus. I hope you can see that. That's better. <coughs> Hold a little bit of pressure on the, on the thread here, not too much, and just start winding. You can do this quite quickly, as long as the thread is winding on nicely, you can see it as it goes. And it will be starting to um, to pull the cane together. Now you don't want to pull too hard at this point because you could easily split the cane. <coughs> and I can always wind it on lightly and then allow the cane to settle, unwind it and then rewind it again a little little tighter the next time to, to you know, ease the cane into shape rather than forcing it into shape because you can so easily split the cane at this point and you, you, you're forcing it into shape so you're putting it under tension now I can see by looking down both sides there that both sides of the, of the reed have married together nicely there. So I'm going to just put a half hitch in there to finish off that. And then I'm going to run it, wind it back again. Make it, keeping it nice and tidy. I'm going to wind it all the way back to the beginning again. So I've got two layers of, of thread there. Go turn the light on again so I can see better what I'm doing. Anyway, I've got two layers of thread going on. Now I'll give me a much better chance of it being airtight. Come all the way back down to the end again. And when I get to the bottom, I'm going to put another couple of half hitches in. That way, the, the, the thread's much less likely to come undone. Might even put a third one in. There you go. Just broke it off there. I might have cut it off, but it just broke off at the right point, so that's fine. Now all I've got to do is take it off the. <coughs> and here I'll have to reposition the camera again. Take it off the mandrel. Re refocus. And I'm literally just going to roll it now. If I hold the 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 tongues. And push down onto the onto the thread I can roll the thread onto my block and that'll help them to help to in the, and on the end where the knots are that helps to smooth it all out and make it all flush just check to see down the sides that there's no no gap I mean it's married together nicely and that's the reed tied together so the best thing to do at this stage uh, is to set it in the block, leave it for 24 hours, let it dry out. There's one other thing you can do at this stage. I've got these little, I don't know how well you can see it, these little slips of cane that I've prepared. Um, and I often just 
push them in the end of the reed at this stage so that they're even and that holds the the lips of the cane of the reed at a, a perfect width and uh, as as the reeds drying out it'll it'll maintain the shape just readjusting the camera again that will maintain the shape of the the lips of the reed so there you go 24 hours to let that dry out thank you